welcome to CEC Gurukul. In my previous lecture, I was discussing the William Wordsworth's poem, The Prelude. I would now carry forward the discussion on William Wordsworth's other poems. William Wordsworth was a great writer. Even his simplest poems are endowed with much deeper meaning from what they seem. The Solitary Reaper is one amongst them. It is a very short and simple poem where a young girl is reaping and singing. But when she is singing, she is singing in some language which is incomprehensible to the poet. Though the words of the song of the solitary reaper are incomprehensible, he focuses on the tone. The tone is of expressive beauty and blissful mood. The poet requests the reader or listeners to just behold and listen to the maiden who is reaping and singing in joy, oblivious of the world. He requests the passerby not to disturb her. The nature here is described in a characteristically romantic way. Nature has the ability to affect us powerfully and profoundly. The poet goes on to explain as he himself is affected and the sweetness of her voice he is affected by the sweetness of her voice he equates the sweetness of the girl's voice to the chirping of birds her song is a part of the beautiful mystery that engulfs the natural world after listening to the song his imagination takes over his sensibilities he realizes that there is a mutual consciousness, spiritual or mystic communion between nature and humans. He compares the song of the girl to that of the nightingale or a cuckoo which is melodious, which provides solace to the whole world. The same is the case with one of his poems, The Daffodils. It also falls in the category of short, sweet and deep meaning poem. The speaker says that while wandering lonely as a cloud, he came across a field of daffodils beside the lake. Look at the imagery that he uses, that he is wandering alone like a cloud and he is coming across a field of daffodils. The central idea of the poem is that of a beautiful experience which gives you a lifelong pleasure. It is because of the beauty of the fields of daffodils that the poet is able to overcome his feelings of melancholy. The daffodils are compared to star clusters in Milky Way to explicate the multitude of the flowers that are fluttering freely besides the lake. The daffodils celebrate the beauty of nature and its purity along with the bliss of solitude. The message that is delivered is that of a reverence bestowed on a simplistic and yet complex aspect of beauty that envelops the whole world. At times, we too come across a lot of blooming flowers, but the thought never occurs to us that we should capture the beauty that would give us uh, food for future. The daffodils also symbolize rebirth and new beginnings because it is the first perennials to bloom after the frost of winter season. I quote from the poem, For oft when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. How many of us look at the garden, the flowers, the plants in this light? None of us. We just pass from there, we, we click a picture, but we, don't, we keep it in our cameras, but we don't keep it in our minds. Another poem by William Wordsworth is Tintern Abbey. Tintern Abbey was an abbey where he was living as a child, but he had to move out for five years and when he returns back after five years, let's see, five years have passed, five summers with the length of five long winters and again I hear these waters 
rolling from their mountain springs with a soft inland murmur. The poet is revisiting the place after an absence of five years. He has come back in the lap of the same natural surroundings after a gap of five years. Nothing has changed. The surroundings are the same. The same sounding cataracts, the hedgerows, the insects, the river and the trees. All the natural uh, objects are at their place. They have not changed. The perspective of the poet to look at them has undergone maturity. The poem traces the development of his love for nature from childhood to manhood. The poet tells the reader how the childhood memories stay in adulthood and how they provide food, th food for thought for future years. Not for this faint eye, nor moan, nor murmur, other gifts have followed. The poet says that although I don't enjoy the nature in the same manner, but I don't mourn for that because I have been compensated. For such loss, I would believe abundant recompense, for I have learned to look on nature, not as in the hour of thoughtless youth, but hearing oftentimes the still sad music of humanity. Earlier, he used to run around the trees, he used to run around the butterflies, run around the water but now he cannot do that he is sitting but he finds that he can now hear the still sad music of humanity in the surroundings of nature the poet does not lament the disappearance of the same feelings and emotions for him the other gifts have followed and let's see what are the other gifts he has been compensated with the gifts of listening to the still sad music of humanity. He can see a spirit pervading in all the objects that are provided by the green earth. <clears throat> he finds in nature a nurse, a guide, a teacher that would guide him in his hour of despair. Whenever he feels sad, he turns to the nature or the memory of his natural surroundings that keep him up for future. A presence that disturbs me with joy. Nature is like a presence to him which disturbs him with joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime, of something far more deeply interfused. Nature is something different. It is, it is endowed with a spirit whose dwelling is the light of setting suns and the sound round ocean and the living air and the blue sky and in the mind of man. A motion and a spirit. Nature is a motion and a spirit to him, which impels all thinking things, all objects of all thoughts, and rolls through all things. Nature is all pervading. It is present everywhere. It is omnipresent and it is benign. Wordsworth is considered the poet of countryside. He depicts the life of nature in its physical and spiritual aspect. <clears throat> His contribution <clears throat> lies in the fact <clears throat> sorry, that he saw a spirit in nature and elevated it to the heights of spiritual glory. <clears throat> Ode on intimations of immortality from recollections of early childhood. This is another one of Wordsworth's poem. The poem begins with the speaker mourning the loss of his youth and the deeper connection he used to have the natural world in his infancy. As a small child smiles and cries on its own, we don't realize, but Wordsworth says that the trailing clouds of glory do we come from God. This is something, always something which is missing and that is the celestial glory as we grow up. We get entangled with the worldly wisdom and our innocence gets lost. The speaker reflects on what it means to age and in the fifth stanza declare that we come from a world which is more heavenly. It is with the memory of that place with which we see the earth. When we are small children, we enjoy the life on earth with a very different purpose and motive. 
but as we grow our maturity comes in the way and we become worldly wise eventually as we grow the memory of from from the god or memory of that heavenly world it continues it starts to fade he advises the reader to go on revisiting the memory page and which can be the only source of regaining the joys and live happily with this mortal life according to him the only way to live happily is to return to nature to look back on the memory page to look back on the glory that we came from god all the objects of nature seemed dream like and clad in celestial light to the poet in the first stanza when your mind and heart is not uh, with this world and they come with the glory of the heaven they are different they enjoy nature they enjoy everything seems innocent you don't see any uh, he admits that he cannot see the things anymore that is the celestial sight which he could see in his infancy the second stanza of the poem is a depiction of the loveliness of the natural scene and sight he can still see the loveliness of the moon the rainbow the rose and the sky at the same time he feels that a glory has passed away from the earth again he does not lament about it third stanza he feels you know uh, that glory is lost and he you know laments also the chirping of the bird the young lamb they not they do, don't give him the same kind of pleasure that they used to he feels sad about it but suddenly he is able to resurrect himself as he hears the mountain echo and the gusting of the winds they provide strength to him and he is able to realize that he should not do any wrong to the season by his grief after the realization of not to spoil the natural atmosphere by grieving he addresses the nature and its creatures that his heart would also participate in the joyful celebration of nature the fifth stanza is a proclamation that the human life is nothing but merely a sleep and a forgetfulness they live in a pure and more glorious realm in heaven before they enter the earth heaven lies about us in our infancy this is what the poet says in his poem and also the trailing clouds of glory do we come from god and as we grow that clouds of glory keep fading as children we still retain some of the memories of heaven it is because of the magical charm the experience on this earth is suffused with energy as soon as the baby passes through boyhood and to become a young adult from thence to manhood the same magic begins to fade he imagines the life of a 6 year old boy who is completely oblivious of the festival or mourning he imitates both the occasions alike a small child is innocent he hardly finds a difference between a morning or a festivity for him the occasion is alike he would he enjoys both but as he grows up his uh, thinking changes he concludes his poem by reconciling with the fact that though the innocence is gone and the glory lost still the memories of his childhood days would provide him food for future sustenance he then feels happy enjoying the beauty and the gifts of nature the discussion on the poems of the william wordsworth can go on and on each time we read his poems we find a different mystery that is unfolded the main aspects of his poetry is his love for nature the various stages of his love for nature and his changed perspective towards the same with the growing up in age is remarkable as a young boy you enjoy a different aspect of nature as a boy you enjoy another aspect 
and when you become an old man you enjoy another aspect as a boy you run run around with butterflies as a boy as a young man you enjoy the colors you and you enjoy the beauty of the butterflies and when you are an old man you enjoy the surroundings of natural objects the the language that he uses the alliterations alliterations the personifications many times he compare he finds a living being in nature so he uses a lot of personifications similes and metaphors that he uses in his poetry are just so natural that it seems no extra effort has been made by the author even the simplest poems such as the daffodils and the solitary reaper are so deep in meaning they are they are very small and simple poems probably they are prescribed in class 6th or 7th course but they are so deep in meaning it is very difficult for a small boy of 6 and 7 to understand the depth in the meaning that those beautiful sights they provide you food for the future years when in vacant or in pensive mood the poet lies on his couch the beautiful scene of the dancing daffodils flashes upon his inward eye and they become the bliss of solitude we can call him a perfect landscape painter wordsworth can be called a landscape painter we can we not only read his poetry but when we read in a clear mind with a clear mind we actually visualize, visualize what he paints with his words they they are mesmerizing the the poetry of wordsworth is a spiritual veneration for nature his poetry shows keen interest in the individual and the imagination he lays great stress on imagination he imagines that nature can be a nurse a guide and a solace provider his fascination for childhood days are also reflected this can be traced in we are seven tintern abbey and the mortality ode characteristically we can say that he missed his carefree days childhood days which were laden with more manly and worldly considerations though he immediately resurrects himself and admits that other gifts have followed he stops lamenting the bygone days and tries to find solace in what is left wordsworth defied all norms of using poetic diction and form of poetic composition while writing the lyrical ballads as i told you in my previous lecture that lyrical ballads was a combination of poetry of lyrics and ballads by wordsworth and his friend coleridge the poems were chiefly written with a view to a certain how far the language of conversation in the middle class of society is adapted to the purpose of poetic pleasure when he when we read wordsworth poetry it is almost colloquial we don't need anyone to interpret that for us we don't have to look for any allusions and references it contains a natural delineation of human passions human characters and human incidents it the lyrical ballads was published in 1798 wordsworth contributed poems about ordinary everyday life but they were colored with imagination which provided those poems the novelty and the feeling of wonder it never occurred to anyone that nature could be endowed with spirit it danced with you it you felt the nature felt sad with you the idea was revolutionary and also controversial at the time because poetry at that time was considered a highest art form with strict standards and required formal style and intellectually worthy subject that was what dryden milton pope they all followed according to wordsworth there can be no difference between the language of prose than that of verse you don't need to have another poetic diction 
to use that for to write poetry the poets they should express themselves as ordinary men and women rather than being specialized as he said that poetry was a man speaking to men so he did not need any specialized language or any specialized power to express himself this new approach allowed more people to express themselves freely the task of the poet became not to preach but convey their inner thoughts and feelings so it was not the poet who was a preacher or he wanted to you know uh, he wrote poetry with a particular end in mind he expressed what he thought what he felt and all the romantic writers in fact they wrote about what they thought and what they felt providing pleasure and emotional response became the purpose and instead of seeking wonder in elevated subjects he sought wonder in natural world and common life through imagination and not only wordsworth actually this was the case with all the romantic writers when we read shelley keats byron they all they all wrote about nature they all had different perception of nature we'll we'll talk about them when we when, when we talk the in person right now it's wordsworth his attitude towards nature significant change in the attitude in due course of time his humanity are significant aspects of his poetry he defies the role of the poet in society he defines the role of the poet in society his contribution to the romantic literature is immense he was the leader of this movement he was a full supporter of the dawn of a new era of humanity and literature he used free style and blank verse to express himself and cater to his boundless imagination when we read wordsworth we have to look into various aspects and perspectives with which he was writing he wanted to write about nature he wanted to write about the various aspects of nature his his mind his development and uh, as as literature students we need to see the various personifications alliterations um in the um, poets that go into the poet's mind uh his poetry is valuable for the ideas that they express uh it they present a poet in quest of his own identity it is concerned with the development of sensibilities and only those aspects and incidents of his life that affected him are included there there are incidents in the poems which may look ordinary to us which may look an or, or small boys or a young boys experience to us but when we when he expresses them he he tells them in a very very in a very very extraordinary manner that the way of expressing is extraordinary to wordsworth the influence of nature on human mind is something more than what human mind can give in the uh, nature now at this stage had an inner touch of love sympathy and hope he turned to nature for solace and consolation in the last stage wordsworth viewed nature as a philosopher it was not only a solace or a teacher or a guide it became a philosopher he found a divine presence a spirit pervading through all the aspects of nature with the above mentioned characteristics and observation i would suggest that as a student of literature we should look into his all his poems in totality with specific points of view we should look into the main idea what they want to express what he wants to express in his poems they are not mere nature poetry they are the development of a poet's mind if we if we want to you know identify ourselves we can do that because you know very ordinary experience uh, we whenever we go through an ordinary experience and after some time we recollect that experience our our perception and our reaction to that same thing is different not the same at it what it was at the specific time and then we have to look into the poet's attitude what is his attitude towards nature the romantic characteristics in his poem that how different was he from the neo classicists from the form from the art from the diction and 
now um, he, he was a great writer his simplest poems are endowed with with very different meaning we have to find out to the words of the song of the reaper and daffodils they are comprehensible but he still enjoys and he makes the reader also enjoy and reader also experience the same feeling he requests his readers to listen and behold the maiden who is reaping and singing you know he wants you to go through the same experience that he himself is going nature here is described nature has a character it is described in a romantic manner it, it's uh, he realizes that there is a mutual consciousness which is spiritual mystic there is a communion a communication between the nature and humans the central ideas of this poem are beautiful experience and you know the experience that they give us throughout our life it is because of this beauty it is because of this experience it is because of this understanding that we are able to survive ourselves in the future times we we go through a lot of sad experiences but the our happiness comes back when we think about the happy moments of life like the happy daffodils the, the solitary reaper or or with this i would like to end my lecture on wordsworth in the next series of mine i would take up shelley and keats uh thanks see see